Hollow Knight is a modern classic and one of my favorite video games of all time. And in this video series, I'm going to talk about the specific elements of Hollow Knight that make it such a great game. In this first episode, we are going to be talking about the freedom of gameplay Hollow Knight allows. And we're going to start this off by talking about the movement. Hollow Knight's movement is defined by full control of the character at all times with pinpoint turns. The lack of momentum in this game makes it so much more interesting as at any time you can turn to react to anything. The same is true with air mobility, something many games lack as the lack of air mobility can really hinder a game because it can make it feel that when you die or take damage that it's rather than your own fault the game's fault all night makes you take accountability for this as when you take damage it's your fault for running into something because you could have turned away the same as it can be said with the down slash attack it is kind of like a get out of jail free card but not just as easy as that as you have to use it well to be able to escape damage this down slash attack adds a whole new aspect to combat and to just going around the world as a lot of the time that you took damage you could have either avoided it by gaining a bit more altitude with the down slash attack or by dodging mid-air with the pinpoint turns. These aspects make Hall Knight's movement so much more fluid and interesting. And the same as can be said with the length of jumps. At first when I got it, being able to jump different lengths was a big turnoff for me as I didn't like that and I wasn't used to it but as I got better and more used to the game it was a selling feature as the different length jumps gave you another aspect of freedom of movement even the double jump ability has different lengths which can be useful in boss fights and platforming alike the only thing that you don't have full control over is the dash, and I think it was a good decision there, as the dash is meant to be fast and instantaneous, and if you had to control the length of it, it just simply wouldn't be as effective and it would feel too micromanaged. The next aspect of freedom of gameplay I'm going to be talking about is the freedom of routing. In Hall Knight, there are a number of ways to end the game, and a number of ways to get each ending. The freedom, freedom of routing and the structure of the game is done extremely well. Within each sub-area, such as the Forgotten Crossroads, there are a number of different ways you can go through the sub-areas. At the start, which sub-areas you go through are pretty much predetermined. It's gonna be the Forgotten Crossroads, then the Green Path, then the Fungal Waste. But within these areas, there are a lot of different ways you can go through them. And once you get to the Fungal Waste, from there there are multiple areas which you can go to. And this is important, as now there is a stacked level of freedom of where you go to. Because you can go to multiple areas within each, uh, like within each greater area. And you can also choose which greater area you can go to. The start of the game is done really well in this aspect, as at first, you can, it seems like you have a lot of choice of where you go to, but it's narrow enough that you'll get to the right places. 
and then later on you get full freedom of choice. And this also can prevent you from getting lost right at the start. So I think that's done incredibly well, and I think the way they kind of have a natural tutorial of how the exploration in the game works is really well done. The final aspect I will talk about in this video is freedom of combat. And this is manifested through a number of ways. The first one I'll talk about is the charm system, which granted isn't fully combat, but in my opinion the charms are mostly for combat. And so the thing about the charms is they work better than any skill tree system because with the skill trees you can't take anything back and this means if there's one dominant build you're probably gonna go with that or you might get screwed over by making some unfortunate choices and ending up with a really weak build. All Knight solves both of those issues with allowing you to switch over to a more powerful build once you realize what is what works well, what doesn't. And it also allows you to experiment with less strong and less powerful builds without penalizing you for it. And the next aspects of combat I will like to talk about is the different moves. So for attacking with the nail, you have four different attacks, not just one. You have the up slash, which doesn't knock you back and is great for flying enemies. Left and right slash to aim, down slash to poke you up. And then you have the nail arts, and a great thing they did is it's not you charge a nail art and use it. It's you charge up the ability to use any one of the nail arts. So you can pick the one that's best for the scenario. Same as set with soul. Once you get soul, you can use it for four different ways. You can heal, you can use the up spell for a lot of damage, the down spell for invulnerability, or the side spell the fireball because it can work at and hit pretty much wherever the boss is and from there you can also save your soul for later use to heal maybe in a safer spot and that is part one of why like all night if you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe, and leave a comment below what your favorite charm is. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.